Hello, and welcome back to SciTai Tech. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a basic Arduino on a breadboard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic Arduino on a perf board. Making it on a perf board is extremely useful for future projects, and I'm going to show you how to make this in this video. Let's get started. These are the parts that you will need to make this project. It's exactly the same parts as it was in a previous video of when I made an Arduino on a breadboard, except the only difference is that there's no socket holder. In this video, the configuration will be slightly different, and to those of you who haven't seen this, I'll re-explain the parts again. What you'll need is an AT Mega 328 microcontroller, a 10K ohm resistor, two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors, a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, and now let's go ahead and configure it. I'm gonna place the socket holder right in the middle of the board, just like this. I'm gonna use a rubber band to hold it down so that way I can solder it. Solder one pin on one side and solder the other pin on the other side. And now you don't need the rubber band anymore because now the socket is held into place and it will not come off. Next, you will solder the male connections, which will then allow you to reprogram the AT Mega. This part's a little tricky. There we go, soldered into place. And now let's bridge it together. Take my 10K ohm resistor, place it in like this, solder it, cut off the leads, and bridge it together on pin one. Place this push button switch next to the resistor, solder it in, and bridge it to the resistor. And it should look just like this. Pin 1 is connected to the resistor, resistor connected to the switch. And this will allow you to reset the AT Mega. Now as you can see that section here is where I want to make ground. I'm going to go and take this negative wire and place it right there for ground and connect that to the push button switch. Push button switch is now grounded and it should look just like this. Now as you can see I have placed a mark representing pin 9 and 10. I'm going to solder those two pins and I want to take these two negative wires to bridge them to those pins and doing that will then allow me to rearrange the position of the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator and the two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors. So now I'm going to go and solder those wires in. Rearrange them just like this. I'll place my 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. Solder that into place. Cut off the leads. Take my two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors, place them in just like this. Solder them into place. Cut off the leads. And it should look just like this. Now 
Now I'm going to bridge everything together. And it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take two more negative wires. And I want to place them next to the ceramic capacitors. Solder the negative wires into place and bridge them together to the ceramic capacitors. And it should look just like this. Now my next thing to do is I want to connect a line for a ground. So I'm going to take those two wires and connect those to ground so everything is grounded. So now the ceramic capacitors are grounded next to the switch, but not attached to the switch, just attached to ground only. There, now everything is grounded, and it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take another ground wire, and I want to place that in pin 8. Solder it into place and bridge it together, just like that. And now move that wire over to another ground position. Solder it into place and ground it. Bridge it and ground it. And now everything shall look just like this. Next, what I want to do is I want to solder pin 22 and then I want to take this negative wire place it into that hole right there solder that wire into place and then bridge it together and then move that wire over to the ground section right there solder it into place and bridge it pin 22 is now grounded and it should look just like this now I have a positive wire and I'm going to solder it into that position and make that whole section PCC and it should look just like this I want to take another positive wire and I want to place it over at pin 7. Bridge it together and it should look just like this and then I'm going to go move that wire over to the VCC section. Solder it into place and bridge it together. Next, what I want to do is I want to take these two positive wires and I want to go and place those two positive wires in pin 20 and 21. Solder them both together and bridge them together. And it should look just like this. Place the two positive wires and place those two into the VCC section. Solder them into place and bridge them together. And now the circuit is complete and it should look just like this. Now it's time to put the AT Mega 328 microcontroller into its socket. Place it in just like this.
Now it's time to compare the difference in size. As you can see, the Arduino is much bigger than my miniature Arduino. The size difference is completely different, but the functionalities are very much the same. So now let's go ahead and test it out. Now I'm going to turn my lab bench power supply up to 5 volts. Now I'm going to go and connect the 80 mega circuit from the lab bench power supply. And now I have another jumper cable, which I'm going to use to connect to ground. And I'm going to test the circuit with using an LED. Connect the cathode of the LED to the jumper cable to connect to ground. And I'm going to leave the anode free. And I'm going to take the LED and connect it to pin 19, which is actually pin 13 in an Arduino, and watch what happens. The LED is now flashing. So yeah, there you have it. So yeah, there you have it. An Arduino that's inside of a little tiny perf board. More portable, more basic, and more compact where you can be able to use it for other future projects to make other stuff and to make other things. So there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTi Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe for more SciTi Tech videos. Till the next tech. Goodbye.